And Marilyn Okoro, though, is in, uh, comes to these Olympic Games in superb form. The Slovak Republic inside her. So just the first three to go through. And Marilyn Okoro, I think, is on the top of her form, running in a good position, just following nicely behind Tamsin Lewis. Marilyn Okoro nicely moves around the outside. Gives herself a big opportunity as they come into the home stretch. She has been in superb form and she looks supreme here again. Marilyn Okoro has really assured, really excelled herself today, looking really powerful. But what a good run by Marilyn Okoro. Looks very, very good indeed. Didn't do anything wrong there whatsoever. Hi guys, how are you? My name's Marilyn Okoro. I am an 800 meter runner and 400 meter runner. I have been to two Olympic games, um, four world championships, and I'm currently still working towards my goal of making the 2020 Olympics. So when I was younger, I grew up in Northwest London, Stonebridge, which is uh, not the uh, Glam most glamorous of areas. Um, my mum did the best she could, single parent home, we're of Nigerian background, so really strict upbringing. Um, however, she wasn't around much, um, you know, just the stresses of life, I think. And a lot of responsibility fell on me to help with my younger siblings. I've got a younger brother and younger si sister, um, which was great, um, but also it was really tough. I had to grow up really quickly. I also spent some time in care um, with so foster family, which was actually, looking back, such a blessing in disguise. My earliest memories in relation to track and field, um, probably school, schools where it all began. I love to go back into schools now, talk to the kids, inspire them, put them through their paces. Um, and for me, I was always really you know, active, always running around, so naturally sports was where I was gonna find a lot of joy, a lot of confidence. Um, and at school, I just enjoyed beating the boys around the playground. I love being the fastest not just girl, but the fastest person at school. Um, but at my first uh, secondary school, that's where I met someone who was so influential to my career, which was my very first coach, George Harrison. And you know, he was probably the first real father figure I had in my life because he did what you know some, most people's parents do. He would take me to the track, come and pick me up and take me to the track and bring me back going out of his way but he did it because he saw something in me he nurtured me he mentored me and really helped build my confidence and he was the first person that said if i worked really hard i could make it to the olympics so i really believe god placed him in my life for that purpose i had a really natural progression um, through school I just enjoyed competition I really once I got onto the track and I got to compete my very first race whether it's sports day or district sports county you know or even re representing my country I loved the competition I'm very thankful to my club as well Shaftesbury Barnet Harriers because they really nurtured me they're my family my athletic family um, and I got to compete for my club regularly on the weekend in the summer months um, and then when I got to university, that was kind of the time where I had to decide whether I was gonna follow the professional athlete route or go into another career. And I just found that actually I could make it. I made the university games and came away with a bronze medal. And I just never wanted to give up on that hope um, that George had planted in me of running in an Olympics one day. I wanted to see how far I could go. So I was really willing to do whatever it takes. So I'm a big firm believer because it's the testimony of my life that you know the road to success is never straightforward. You might have your plan um, and there's the way it's gonna go and there's also God's plan. And I'm really living by, you know, the belief that, you know, God's will will always be done. And I just feel like all those obstacles that have been in my path, um, they've been there for a reason and I've learned something and it's not always easy and it's kind of painful but so is growth um, so I just encourage you that 
no matter what trials you face to keep pushing through because on the other side of those trials and on the other side of your fear um, is what you want most and what you're striving for. I was young the one thing that I knew was that there was always someone looking over me there were some really miraculous I can only say there were miracles miraculous situations that God brought me out of um, and he's always just had given me that comfort had that hand over me letting me know that there was more to life out there um, I struggled a lot with loneliness when I was younger I always felt alone um, and I think through my relationship with God I've learned that actually I'm never alone um, and that's something I want you guys to always remember you know you, we've got this platform for you um, but first and foremost always know that the Heavenly Father he is always with you just know that God loves you he loves you so much there's nothing you have done or that you can do which will change how much he loves you um, another message I just would love to leave with you is just learn to communicate it's so important to talk to people um, and share what you're going through never go through things alone and also lastly just never give up never give up on your dream there is something planted in your heart about your future and your destiny and it's there for a reason you know it's human nature we are going to feel fear we're going to be scared but feel it and go ahead and do it anyway because that has literally been my story all the way to becoming an olympian twice so guys it's been so great sharing with you i'm looking forward to um, the coming months and years as we grow united as one family have a blessed day everyone thank you for listening to my story god bless